it's going to go up. So all, with the GameStop people, they're basically collectively coming together. It's basically like a bunch of guppies coming together and becoming one giant whale and jumping into the market and creating big splashes. And the other whales are mad at it. So it's, all the Reddit people have kind of formed, come together to form one whale. And they're like, hey, we're going to splash AMC. Oh, we're going to splash this. We're going to splash this. All right. So let's not just focus on GameStop per se, but this raft of stocks um, the, 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 that have become enmeshed in this. And the decision by the brokers to restrict trading. Yeah, it is very curious that Robinhood is doing this, because obviously you could argue that Robinhood benefited from the flood of money coming into the firm by younger investors who are out there and maybe they're tired of just blindly buying an S&P 500 index fund that's kind of boring. Yeah, you got exposure to Apple like everyone else on the planet. They're looking for a little bit more excitement and they are day trading things like GameStop and in the process hurting some of the big hedge funds out there. But now all of a sudden you have Robin Hood saying, yeah, maybe this is getting a little bit too much out of hand. So we're going to restrict some of the trading, only letting people close out positions. That may not necessarily be a free market. And amazingly enough, you have people on both sides of the aisle politically agreeing on this. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez had a pretty strongly worded tweet saying that she's not thrilled with this. Ted Cruz, of all people, then agreed with her, and she shot back on Twitter saying, thanks, but no thanks, I don't want your support after what happened to the Capitol. But all that being said, strange bedfellows indeed, Mr. Quest. Indeed, and, and the reason, of course, is that the one thing market, besides certainty, the markets don't ever wish to become unruly. Hence, for example, we do have circuit breakers if the market was to be in a flood. And I'm just wondering whether Robin Hood is really just doing something common sense-like in sense of it's putting its own circuit breaker in, or rather a dramatic one, because, and I'm not taking sides here, but the retail side did allow the market to become unruly. Yeah, I think it is legitimate to make that case but all that being said, Richard, this is supposed to be a free market, which means that people, in theory, should be free as grown adults to make their own decisions, even if they may be irresponsible. And I think the problem here is that you have investors that are being frozen out. All right, sup everybody? This is DJ Radon at TTM Academy. So this is going to be a very quick lecture. All right, I want to give a shout out to everybody that's watching this. And uh, so this video is basically about why, but the whole GameStop thing, right? And you know, other stocks, everything that's getting pumped up. So just to give everybody um, a refresher, um, this is TTM Academy, and this is a, a science, a hip hop science institution. So we, you know, we talk about turntablism, the mathematics behind it, the mathematics behind rapping, but we're also doing electives, so social studies and current events, and and uh, this is gonna be a business elective. Um, so if you look actually on my sweatshirt, there's over, uh, there's probably over, uh, on this periodic matrix of scratches, if you can see that, there's, a, there's over uh, 900 different waveforms uh, that can also be translated to the stock market. And if you look at this part of my uh, sweatshirt down here, there's another matrix, that's the periodic matrix of faderless scratches, and there's over 1,400 different waveforms that can also be translated into the stock market. And a couple of years ago, I actually created uh, something called TTM Stocks, um, or TTM Stock Market Analysis, right? Um, so, and with that site, you can go there on Facebook and, you know, just give tips, stock tips. But a couple of years ago, we actually stopped giving tips on, uh, on the regular stock market. And if you're wondering why, why do we stop is because the crypto market started taking over and the volatility of the, the regular stock market got so extreme that it's like, if you're going to be, you know, uh, dealing with an extreme volatility and then it takes, you know, it could take a year and a half for the stock to come back. 
you might as well do crypto because in crypto you're dealing with the same extreme volatility, but the it's, it, it might come back within, especially the top 20 cryptos, they're going to come back within a couple of months, especially within a year. But if a regular stock drops 20%, you know, it might take five years for that thing to come back. Three years, two years. I've waited two years before. You know, but with, with crypto, everything comes, but it's always coming back. And another thing to point out about crypto is that, you know, even when the COVID drop happened, you know, this crypto was able to bounce back on its own without any government support. While the regular stock market, I like to call it regs or swag market, um, it, it, you know, the government had to put billions and billions just for it to bounce back a little bit. And even that little bounce back wasn't even a big bounce back. It was it was basically, uh, it, you know, it bounced back a little bit, but it kept dropping down. Eventually, the market bounced back itself, you know, creating the V bounce that, you know, Trump was always talking about. All right. So, um, you know, they say that people only watch the first two minutes of YouTube videos. So I'm going to I'm going to tell you all the secret in the first two minutes. I'm not going to you know, wait 45 minutes or, you know, try to extend it out um, for people to, you know, try to monetize extra viewing time or something like that. I'm going to tell you what the secret is now. So the main reason um, what's really happening with the whole GameStop thing, um, you know, there's a bunch of issues going on, but the main issue that nobody's pointing out, that's what this video is pointing out. The one issue that nobody's pointing out and the one issue that nobody's pointing out is this very, very simple very very simple issue and the issue is that um the crypto market and the regular market have already collided they and it happened a year or two ago a couple years ago two years ago they collided and you know so the regular stock market um you know it'd be like you know in a, in a day you know um a one percent increase or decrease would be normal two percent increase um decrease or increase was normal you know, even 3%, it's like, oh, that's a good day, 3% increase, really good day, right? 4% is really good day, that's, you know, then you start to get a 5% increase in one day, that's, oh, that's even more abnormal, that's like a really good day, that's like a day, you know, you, you find that the company put their income, their earnings report out, and everybody starts dropping money on it, and, and they did really well that day, 5% is, is, is great for the regular stock market, right? And then, you know, you get to 6, 7, 10, 20%, 15%. That's all that stuff is like stuff that never happens in the regular stock market. Either way, going up, you know, 10, 15, 20% or dropping 10, 15, 20% in one day. But in the crypto market, the volatility is much higher. So you have stocks dropping, you know, 15% in a day and going up 15% a day or going down 100% in one, uh, 99% in one day going up because it can't go down 100%, you know. But going down 99% one day, going up 99% one day, right? So that's the main reason why the regular stock market is going through this whole GameStop thing. And people are the regular, you know, um, besides all the hedge funders that are mad. And we'll talk about that and explain, you know, puts, calls, and shorts. But the reason, uh, and just for those who don't know, I went to the Stern School of Business. Um, you know, usually in the hip hop world, I try to hide that because they're like, oh, yeah, they don't want you to know, you know, it's like you're supposed to be from the street and da da da, you know, da da da, you know. But uh, yeah, so, so for everybody that's watching, you're getting some, you know, stock and crypto tips from, you know, somebody that went to the Stern School of Business, one of, one of the top business schools in, in, uh, in the U.S. All right, but uh, I actually studied information systems there. So, you know, you can see TTM notes, notation is a form of information systems. All right, so, so we're going to start the, the, the lecture. So that's basically the, the main gist of the lecture is that um, the, volatility, the volatility of the crypto market, the extreme volatility of the crypto market has collided with the um, low volatility of the regular stock market. So the traders that are used to doing the crypto market, they get into the regular stock market and they're like, this is stupid. Oh, it went up 2% today. Like, or this went up 3% over the whole year. You know, it's, just, it's stupid to them. Where if you go to Coinbase right now, nearly every single, every single coin on Coinbase, they got like 40 coins now. Um, almost every single coin on Coinbase is up like, for the year or two, you know, for the past year, for the past two years is up like over 100%, 80%, 100%, 3,000%, 200%. So if you're trading, this is, that's why I stopped, you know, dealing with regular stocks. I only deal with crypto since like past two years, you know, um, because regular stocks, like after GoPro, you know, I was, I was getting into GoPro, like, 
You know, I'd be on tour and be like, oh, look, there's a big GoPro booth there. You walk into Best Buy, there's GoPro, GoPro booth, you know, and then GoPro dropped, you know, like 25% in one day, like around this time last year, two, I mean, two years ago, no, three years ago, 2018, it dropped like 18%, I mean, 23% one day, 25% one day. Um, and it, and it just came back now. It took two years for GoPro to come back, but in the crypto market, it hasn't happened. So stocks, you know, stocks are, are soon becoming the thing of the past for people that are actually trying to make money in the market that aren't, you know, cause the thing about, uh, thing about stocks is that just to make money in the market, you have to, uh, you know, really start to take out marginal loans. And we'll talk about that too, just to be able to make money. So like if you have 500 bucks, you're not going to make any money in the stock market, you know, generally, you know, cause it's like, Hey, 500 bucks, it went up 5% that year. You know, that, that's, that's nothing, you know? Right. But if you have 500 bucks in crypto and it's like, Oh, yo, my 500 bucks just went up 200%, you know? So that's like, boom, now you got 300. I mean, now you got 1500 bucks. So it's like, it's a no brainer. That's why I stopped dealing with, uh, you know, I stopped dealing with uh, the, the, the regular stock market or the regs. And I call it like, once again, I call it the swag market, you know, the crypto and the swag market. So, so it's like, it makes no sense to, to, uh, to steal, to still uh, deal with regular stocks when you can put the same money on some crypto and, and it'll go up way, way more. You know, obviously it can go way, way down more, but if you're putting in a small amount of money, then it doesn't, um, then it's better to do something more risky because it's like, if you're only investing 250 bucks and then it's like, oh yeah, it goes up uh, 1%, you know, over two months, you know, it's like, okay, yeah. But if you put it on the, that crypto, you know, you're actually going to get a return. Um, and, uh, one of my students, um, I think, you know, I was telling her right at the COVID drop, I was like, buy Ethereum, buy Ethereum, telling all my friends, buy Ethereum, buy, you know, buy anything, you know, cause the whole market was down. Ethereum was 120 bucks, uh, in March, March last year, Ethereum had dropped to 120 bucks and, and now it's at, you know, 1400 bucks, 1300 bucks, 1200 bucks, you know, so that's a thousand percent. That means if you put a hundred dollars on Ethereum right on COVID, you have a thousand dollars right now. Or if you put a thousand dollars on COVID on Ethereum uh, right at the bottom of the COVID drop, you know it would be you know ten thousand bucks. If you put ten thousand, you would have had a hundred thousand bucks. If you put a hundred thousand, it's like yo, that's crazy. How much money you have, you know? Um, so so the thing is, is that the regular stock market is a thing of the past now, and that's what this whole GameStop thing is: is that the regular stock market is colliding with the crypto market and the people that are used to trading crypto when they get into regular stocks, it's like, Hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to settle for a 4%, you know, uh, profit over, you know, three months, five months. I want 4%, you know, in a couple of hours or 4% a day, you know, cause in the regular market, you know, if you get a, uh, the only day you're going to get, you know, like a, a 10% you know, increase or 15% increase is if they invent some new technology or, you know, they have a great earnings report and everybody starts investing. But when there's a good earnings report and they have all those investors, those are all people with money. So now we're going to talk about the actual GameStop thing. So the, the main reason why that all this stuff is happening with GameStop is that, you know, the gamers, the Reddit people, the, you know, all these people are organizing regular people. And, you know, people, regular people with um, uh, even uh, with higher incomes too, people that just people that are not brokers um, and not hedge funds and not billion dollar corporations, million dollar corporations, etc. Those regular people are finally getting into the market. So and and uh, but then what's happening is we see that uh, they're coming down with regulations on the market and trying to stop regular people from making money out of magic, basically, because that's what the stock market is. It's alchemy. It's magic. It's saying I'm going to use my brain. I'm going to use this currency, this fiat or whatever this this current this thing is, and I'm going to put it on something and I'm going to make money from money. Right. And just using time and money and making money from money and time. You know, you just add the t money, add the time, and you're making money. So, you know, regular people started getting into that and they started regulating it. So, you know, they, they, they shut down Robinhood from uh, trading GameStop. And, uh, you know, there's also other stocks that people were doing, AMC and, you know, a bunch of other stocks. But they stopped people from trading GameStop. And then uh, they, um, they also limited people, I think, after the day after that, um, they limited people to... Uh, 
to only buying one a day. You know, so if anybody knows the stock market or the crypto market, anything, when you buy one of any stock, unless it's a really big stock like Amazon or 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 whatever, you know, something that's like, you know, very expensive, like, oh, it's a thousand dollar stock or Bitcoin. It's a, you know, thirty five thousand dollar stock, thirty four thousand dollar stock, probably about right now, then it's going to be, uh, you know, it, um, then it's like, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of money. So, yeah, you can make money off of just buying one or, you know, let's say taking, for instance, uh, you know, a, a stock that some stocks go up to like 200,000 bucks. There's stocks that are that big, but only really, really rich people can afford those. And to make money in the stock market, what you have to do is take something called a marginal loan. So like, let's say you have 2000 bucks, you're not going to make much money in the stock market. But once you get to the $5,000 level, what happens is uh, um, companies like Charles Schwab or TD Bank or any type of trading company, they'll give you what's called a marginal loan. So you can take your 5000 and they'll double that. They'll say, well, we'll give you a 5000 loan. You can trade stocks with it and you just got to um, pay us back, basically. you know. So that's a marginal loan. Um, and you get interest on that. They charge you APR on that, you know. So so really don't have to pay them back. You just got to keep paying the APR and then eventually you got to pay them back. But uh, as long, but you just hold it up, hold it with with the APR, you know, and you can pay them back and, and pay off the APR or whatever. So, you know, that's basically the only way a regular person can get it, can make money in the market is to uh, to get a marginal loan. And the thing is, is that so then once you get to the $10,000 level, you say, oh, I got 10000 in stocks, you know, you put it in Schwab or TD Bank or something, and then they'll give you another $10,000 loan. You know, I mean, they'll, they'll basically match whatever you put in. If you put in $10,000, they will give you a $10,000 loan. So then you can trade using $20,000 with the stocks. You know, so that's the only way that regular people can make money in the market. But the thing is, the stock market... Um, the reason why you have to take loan, marginal loans out to make money in the market is because, is because uh, let's say you have that ten thousand dollars, you know, and over the at the end of that year, it only it it, it only went up five percent, you know, at that one stock only went up five percent or something like that by the end of the year, or maybe after a couple of months it went up five percent, and it's like okay, I had ten thousand on it, you know, and, and you know that's not a lot of money from that. That's only going to be five hundred bucks, right? So the thing is, is that if you, uh, you get a marginal loan, then it's like, oh, you got 20000 on it. Now you just, you know, um, if you made 5% off of it, then now you're making 1000 bucks. you know, right? So, um, so the thing is, is that, you know, um, regular people have to borrow money just to be able to make money in the regular stock market. But with GameStop, regular people are getting into it and they're making money from it because everybody's able to communicate with each other, just like brokers and elites and uh, lodges and and clubs and, and things like that have been able to do for for decades and decades and decades. They've been texting, uh, calling each other and sending each other messages and, and uh, you know, saying, yeah, Monday we're going to do this and do that or whatever. But now that regular people doing it, the corporations are trying to stop them from doing it and censor them. So... Um, so now, so we're gonna start. We're gonna we're gonna look listen to a bunch of uh, of different theories on all this on the whole GameStop thing um, from a couple of different sources, and um, and I'm also gonna explain some simple concepts. So the first concepts you gotta understand with the stock market is is uh, um, the difference between the stock market and the crypto market is that stocks are actually part of a company, right? So if a company does bad. And people see that the public perception can change and, and it'll fall, you know, the stock could fall and, and the company's not doing well. Just like how GameStop for years wasn't doing well, they're closing down stores, right? But if, uh, if it's doing good, right, then more people get into it, you know, and, uh, and then the, the, the price starts to go up. So basically market cap is the main thing you have to understand. Market cap is why things go up and down. So the more people put money on something, the more expensive that thing becomes, right? So if it's for a company, then it's like you're owning part of their company. You own a, a stake. If you, even if you only have one stock, you own a small, small, small percent of that company. And then if you if you get like up to, you know, you got billions of that stock, then you might own 50% of that company or 70% of that company. And then you can start to make decisions once you get to a certain level. Even at the lower levels, you can make decisions and they'll and you can be a, um, you can vote on certain issues. You know, they'll send out a thing like, hey, Home Depot's having a vote on this for all their shareholders. But all those things are, you know, the regular stock is only going to make 12% in a year at the most, you know, in general, 
you know, but the crypto, it could be 500% in a year. It could be 200% in a year. So it's like, you know, it's a no brainer. And now that these worlds have collided, now, you know, the, the issues hit the fan and everybody's the, not everybody, but the, the corporations and the, the, the one percents and the, the deep state and elites are, are uh, freaking out. Um, so yeah, so now, so, so that's basically what a stock is. A stock is just a stake in the company. Now, when you hear people talk about currencies, currencies are like stocks, but it's different. You're, you're placing money on a currency like euros versus dollars and, and regular currencies don't keep going up because if they keep going up forever, then they'd be the richest country in the world, kind of like the U S is, and nobody else would be able to touch them. So even the U S has to go down, um, and up you know, as far as currencies. And most currencies go up and down while companies go up forever. Uh, let me go go this way on the camera. So most com so with regular stocks, I mean, with regular, um, like a currency, like gold or, I mean, I'm sorry, with uh, like the euro or the pound or the US dollar, you know, those things are going up and down, up and down. Like, so that, let's say for instance, you know, the euro, you know, maybe the euro, at the lowest hit like a dollar in five cents. It's been up a dollar 20 cents, a dollar, it used to be a dollar 30 cents, you know, you know, um, so basically it's there, it's staying within a range. It's going up and down and up and down and people are making money from that, from that fluctuation or losing money from the fluctuation. And they call that zero point where every time somebody is losing money, somebody's making money. All right. So that's, that's basically that. That's basically what a stock is. We explain a stock. That's like um, t taking part in a company. We explained, uh, uh, I explained a, a currency. So it's putting money on a, on a country's currency uh, and you can put money on anything. But the thing about crypto coins, that what's different about crypto is that crypto is more like Facebook or, t or Twitter or something, or like, it's more like a, a like popularity contest. It's not about how good is that company doing? Because like all these coins that are out there, the crypto coins, most people don't really use them for the actual purpose that they're meant for. It's more of a population, a popularity contest. That's why you can have like Dogecoin, you know, they say it was created out of a joke. You can have a coin that's a total joke and it could be a billion dollars on it because, you know, people believe in it. It's just like, hey, do you like Daft Punk? And let's say you go to Daft Punk's Facebook, maybe they have a million and a half followers. And then you go back there next week, now they got 2 million followers. So it's the same thing. It, the, just as the money keeps piling on and making the price of, of coins go up is the same as like, you know, Instagram or Facebook, where if you keep adding uh, likes onto something, you know, you go to Kanye West page and it's like, oh, it's a million people. Oh, now it's a million, 1.2 million. It just keeps going up and going up and, it, and the market cap gets bigger and bigger. So that means with crypto, it's, crypto can go up forever. Where let's say you take Apple or Facebook, even though those are like the top companies in the world, Amazon, they can't just keep going up forever quickly. Like they can go up forever slowly, but they can't just go super high up. Like, you know, um, because the thing is, is that uh, they have to invent new technologies and they have to buy other companies and create new new systems to be able to actually like, you know, uh, uh, go up even higher because, you know, people just like Facebook right now has already reached its, you know, reached kind of uh, the maximum number of users. They are everybody that's going to have a Facebook page already pretty much has one. And, you know, the, the youth aren't really into Facebook. So, so they're not into it. That's why Facebook has to buy Instagram and they have to buy this, you know, Google has to buy YouTube. These companies have to buy other companies so that they can keep expanding and, and and keep making more money so their stock can keep going up. But a coin is just like, it's more, you know, it's the same as like, hey, do you like uh, Arsenio Hall? And not that many people, maybe his page might be 150,000 people. So that's that's how it is. It's just a popularity contest, you know? So, all right, so now we're gonna, um, so I explained that. Now I'm gonna explain what a margin is. I explained it a little bit before. A margin is when you borrow money from a, uh, when you borrow money from a, from a company like a Schwab or a TD Bank or, you know, if you're if you're using a um, a stock trading um, part of a company, they'll give you loans based on what you have, right? Now, if you um, once you I talked about the five thousand dollar level, that's what they usually start with. Once you get to the uh, twenty five thousand dollar level, that's when they allow you to be a day trader. All right, so we're going to talk about day trading. So once you get to um, once you put a twenty five thousand in, like a Schwab or like a TD Bank, 
account, um, stock trading account, they'll let you day trade. So when you have 25,000 in there, just like before when they when they put um, whatever money you put in there, they'll they'll double it. So if you put in 25,000, they'll let you borrow um, 25,000 for as long as you want. They're just going to charge you APR on it, right? And, but then as a day trader, they're also going to let you borrow another 50,000, but you have to um, sell it by the end of the day. And, you know, you could keep, you could hold it overnight, hold it two nights, but after you hold it like a night or two nights, then you'll start to get some um, SEC kind of violations and they'll make, and they'll make you sell it off or they'll purposely sell it off for you. They'll, they'll go over you and, and sell your, your stocks, right? So that's, that's being a, um, so day, tra so what day traders do is they'll, they put that 25,000 in. Now they can work with a hundred thousand dollars within a day and they'll trade a bunch of stocks. You know, they'll put 50,000 on this, 50,000 on that. So even if it's only going up a little bit, they're making, even if it only went up 3% that day, they had 50,000 on it. So they made a bunch of money off of that, right? Because if you're only putting, you know, 500 bucks in and it goes up 3%, you're not making a lot. So the stock market is made for people with, with a lot of money. It's because the, the percentages are low because it's safer. Um, but you got to have a lot of money to do that. That's why crypto mark, the crypto market is really for people that don't, that aren't working with a lot of money and aren't getting loans from, from these companies and stuff like that. So the thing is, is that let's say you um, borrow that um, 50,000 bucks and the 25,000 bucks that they give you, if you put in 25,000 um, bucks, now you got a hundred bucks, a hundred thousand bucks. Um, you know, let's say the stock drops 50% that day and, and uh, you know, the company goes out of business. Like let's say like GoPro, for example, GoPro, you know, dropped like 25% in one day about three years ago. And so let's say you had a hundred thousand on GoPro and it dropped 25%. In one day, that's going to be a twenty-five thousand dollar drop. So then, let's say you sell off all your stocks, and you're like, "Oh man, I just lost twenty-five thousand on GoPro." Um, that means that uh, you got to sell back that other fifty thousand you borrowed. That's just for the day for day traders. And this anybody can day trade as long as you put twenty-five thousand in. They'll give you a, um, a day trade as a marginal account, right? They'll give you that marginal money. But uh, so yeah, so let's say you put that hundred thousand in, and then you just lost. 25% that day because the, the, you know, what happened with GoPro was they were trying to expand their line and make drones and all the other stuff and nobody was buying their drones. So they shut down their whole drone department and they fired everybody and people freaked out and started selling all their GoPro, even though you see GoPro everywhere, you think it's a great company, but you know, they're, they're, uh, you know, people freaked out. So boom, that's a $25,000 loss. So that means you sell back the 50,000 that you borrowed for that day. And now all you have is your original twenty five thousand, but you owed them twenty five thousand originally. You borrowed a hundred thousand. I mean, you borrowed seventy five thousand from them. So um, you return the fifty thousand. That means you still owe them twenty five thousand, right? So that means you have no money left. All your money is gone, right? So somebody could lose twenty five thousand with with margins, you know. So they say be very very careful with margins. So once you you know, start doing, if you get to the level of 5,000 book where you can get in a marginal account, then, you know, you got to be very, very careful with margins. So that's just an example how you could just, you could lose all your money. Um, but the thing is, so, but with coins, they don't give you margins. There's no companies that are like, hey, I'll give you a, a loan of 10,000 bucks to buy Bitcoin, or I'll give you a loan. You know, they're not doing that. All right. So now we're going to show how margins affect the, the, with the whole GameStop thing. All right. So there, there's a couple of basic things that people do to hedge futures and hedging is, is basically um, trying to uh, limit your losses for the future. Right. So um, in the past, we've talked about hedging when it relates to like politics, where let's say you take Vice magazine, the, the founder, Gavin from Vice magazine, you know, started the Proud Boys. Right. But then also Vice magazine, you know, so Vice magazine has always been kind of on that kind of alt-right kind of tip, kind of, uh, um, you know, the, the Proud Boys kind of tip ever since they started, you know, but then they would hedge themselves by, you know, having hip hop articles and, and you know, the, and people uh, right now, Vice Media, you know, they'll cover, you know, black issues or hip hop issues. So then that's hedging. So even though their core audience is like Proud Boys, they're trying to hedge the market and, you know, get into and just in case the Proud Boys don't give them enough money that year that, you know, they can get money from hip hop people or get views or likes or, or whatever from people in the hip hop community. So that's hedging is hedging is, 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 uh, kind of, uh, going against what your, um, 
you normally trying to make money off of, right? So if you're if somebody is is selling, uh, let's say somebody's selling uh, cars, somebody might be like, well, let me buy some bicycle shares too, just to hedge that, because maybe the cars break down and people are riding bicycles and it's in China or something, right? So that's basically hedging. So what so what the hedge funds do is they're they're putting money in, on options and shorts and things like that to uh, um, uh, based upon what they think is going to happen in the future. So we're going to talk about what those things are. So first, you've got calls, right? And a call is basically um, somebody calling the future. You can think about it like that. Like you're like, I'm going to call that. And, and, and that means you think that the price of a stock is going to go up. So you're going to call it. So um, you're basically buying a contract that says that I think that stock's going to go up. I want to buy it now for this you know, lower price. And then I'm going to sell it for um, the higher price, right? You know, so that, that's basically what a what a what a call is—a put, but it's not. But you're not obliged to pay it back. It's not. Um, it's it's you're not obliged to pay a um, a call or a put back. Now, if we're talking about a put, a put is the opposite of that. A put is like, hmm, I think this stock is going to go down over time. I think it's going to go down, right? All right. So let's say the stock is. Uh, you know, a hundred bucks, and 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 uh, and you think it's gonna be go down to ninety five bucks, then uh, if it happens, then you make five bucks off of that. And now with the with the call, and and you're betting on the stock going up over time. Let's say the stock's a hundred bucks, and then you think it's gonna be a uh, hundred and five bucks, then you can uh, do that call, and then you'll be able to, uh, you know, make that five one off. All right, but the thing is, is that. Um, with a call and a, and a put, you don't actually have to have the money. You don't have to buy, use the hundred bucks to buy the stock. You're just um, putting a little bit of money down, or putting a certain money down in that contract. And if it ha if what you predict happens, they'll send you that five bucks. Or if if uh, what you put money on doesn't happen, they'll just take take away the money that you gave them, or take away some of the money that you gave them. Maybe they'll just ask you for fifteen bucks. Or something like that for that contract. So those are calls and puts. So we did those calls and puts, right? And I'll give you the exact definition of a call and put. So we're gonna um, look at. All right, we're gonna flip around. We're gonna look at uh, this right here. All right. So um, so basically, an option is a contract giving the buyer the right, but not the obligation to buy. In the case of a call or sell, I mean, uh, it, the option to buy in the case of a call or sell in the case of a put. The underlying asset at a specific price on or before a certain date. All right, so we already explained that. So I explained what that is. Now the second thing is is called a uh, is called a, a short, and that's what's happening now with the whole with all the GameStop stuff is is shorts. All right, so we're going to talk about shorts. So a short is kind of like a um, kind of like a, a, a put, where you think something's going to go down in the future, and you're going to try to make money off of that. That's what all these billion dollar hedge funds are doing so what a what a short is a short is basically um the difference between a short and a call is that uh um with a short you um you actually have to pay the money if it, it uh, no matter what with a short you have to pay the money no matter what with the call you're just putting a little bit of money down and if it works out you make the money if it doesn't work out you lose some of your money or all of your money but you don't have to put a lot of money down but with the short is a different type of thing. A short is what's basically happening is somebody is like a margin. We explain margins. It's a loan from a stock company like a Charles Schwab or a TD Bank. Uh, you're, you're basically uh, what the brokers are doing is that they're getting a loan. You know, they're getting a loan. And uh, so they're saying that I think so they're getting a loan for the stock at 100 bucks. And then they're saying, you know what, I think this stock is going to be uh, it's going to fall short. That's why it's called a short. They're buying it for um, um, a certain price. Let's say it's at a hundred bucks, and then they're like, you know, I think it's going to fall to ninety bucks, right? So if it, ninety bucks, so if it falls, so they're making a contract with a company that says, I believe that this stock in three weeks is going to fall to ninety bucks. So I want to buy um, one of those, right? They want to buy one stock of that. So that stock is normally a hundred bucks, right? So they want to be able to buy it at um, 90 bucks and sell it for 100 bucks, right? So they want to make that uh, $10 profit, 
right? So they're basically making a contract that's saying, um, you know, um, I want you to take some of your stocks. I mean, that I want you to take one of your stocks and let me borrow it. And I want to be able to make the money off of it when it falls. You know, I want to be able to sell it um, for um, and make uh, that ten dollars. But what's happening is if if the stock uh, goes up, then they they lose the money and they still have to pay back. They still have to give the person a hundred bucks no matter what. So um, the thing is, is that if if the price falls to ninety bucks, they still have to give that person one stock. So I, excuse me, not a hundred bucks. They have to give the person one stock because they wanted one stock and they borrowed one stock. And the, the 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 price fell to ninety bucks. In the best case scenario, the the stock fell to ninety bucks, and they give the person one stock back. You know, after that time period, like here, here's a here's a stock. But if it goes up to two hundred bucks, they still have to give that person one stock. And if it goes to two hundred, they're gonna have to put a hundred of their own money in just to give that person one stock. So that's what's happening with GameStop. What's happening with GameStop is that, um, and there's two types of shorts. So there's a naked short and uh, um, uh, a clothed, clothed uh, short. And naked shorts are illegal in the US, but clothed sh shorts are legal in the US. So these are clothed uh, shorts that they're doing. So um, so basically what happened with GameStop is, is that, you know, GameStop, just like the, the crypto market and GameStop collided, right? So the crypto people are just buying it and it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. And then uh, um, what happened is, you know, it's going up and up and up and up and up. So then the stock market people, they're used to seeing a steep slope and they're like, whoa, that's the, that slope is is steep. Um, for those that don't know what slope means, slope is the angle that something is, that something is, you know, so like this is, this is 100% uh, slope, right, is a straight line going up. And this is zero slope is a line that's just totally straight. Right. And then it's like so that's more and more and more slope as you go up. So once they once traders start seeing a lot of slope and they see like, whoa, that's super high, super steep. They're like, yo, that's about to collapse. So I'm going to put money on that. I'm going to borrow, you know, I'm going to do shorts. So that's what they did. They put millions and millions and, you know, even billions, whatever, on on the fact that they thought that uh, um, GameStop was going to collapse. And then, boom, what happened? GameStop kept going up, covered up. So then they had to pay back. Um, you know, they had to pay that, they had to pay that back, you know, and they lost money. So it's like, hey, they thought they were going to come out making 2 billion, but they ended up having to pay like 14 billion. And then it's like, boom, their company's out of business. All right. And then there's something also called what's called a short squeeze. A short squeeze is similar to what's happening with GameStop, but it can happen without, uh, you know, crypto type traders that are just making something go up and up and up. Um, what, what can happen is with a short squeeze is that let's say, you know, a bunch of people think that it's going to collapse so that so everybody's like, oh, this is going to collapse. So I'm going to put my shorts on it. I'm going to put my shorts on it. And if everybody puts in their shorts on it, it's going to keep going up and up and up. And none of those people are going to make money. And that's what's also happening. So there's a short squeeze happening, too. And there's a, a crypto crowd buying all this stuff, buying all the stuff. They're the one the crypto crowd started the short squeeze. So the short squeeze is putting billionaires out of business, corporations out of business. People that are putting, you know, they put millions and billions on on the fact that they thought GameStop was going to drop. All right, so now we're going to listen to, um, I'm going to explain the short selling real quick, and then we're going to listen to a bunch of videos. I mean, watch a bunch of videos. All right, so, uh, all right, so boom. So, oops, why is this light on? I don't know how to turn this light off, but whatever, I'll figure it out. Um, so it says, what is short selling? Short selling is an investment or trading strategy that speculates on the decline in a stock or other securities price. It's an advanced strategy that should only be undertaken by experienced traders and investors, right? So traders may use short selling as speculation and investors or portfolio managers may use it as a hedge against the downside risks of a long position, that long position meaning waiting for a long time. In the same security or related one, speculation carries the possibility of substantial risk and is an advanced trading method. Hedging is more common is a more common transaction involving placing an offsetting position to reduce risk exposure, right? So in short selling, a position is opened by borrowing shares of a stock or other assets. So like I was saying before, it's borrowing the stock and paying it back in the future at a different price and hopefully a lower price. That's what they that's what they're betting on is that it's going to short sell and be, and go lower. So the investor believes it will decrease in value by a set future date. 
the expiration date. The investor then sells these borrowed shares to the buyers willing to pay the market price. Before the borrowed shares must be returned, the trader is betting that the price will continue to decline and they can purchase them at a lower cost. The risk of loss on a short side is theoretically unlimited since the price of any asset can climb infinitely. But like I was saying before, you know, the stock market, even though the stock market can technically climb infinitely, really it can't because, um, you know, a company can only get so big. It's like, like, for instance, Microsoft, they're huge. Everybody's got windows. And, you know, if you look at their, their stock, it keeps going up and up and up over the years, but it doesn't look like crypto. You're not going to see regular stock market stuff go up crazy, except stocks like Tesla. And a lot of the people that were trading Tesla originally, when it went up from like 300 bucks to 1700 bucks, just in right when the, that new truck came out, that new triangular truck, um, I'll show a picture of that in the, in the enhanced version um, of this lecture. But when they came out with that triangular truck, Tesla went up from 300 to 1700 and that's totally abnormal just to happen within eight months, you know, in the, in the stock market. But that, that's what happened because a lot of the Tesla traders are coin traders and day traders and they just care about making money. So day traders are basically just buying low, selling high, buying low, selling high. And that's what regular traders are doing too. You just buy low, sell high. That's the whole point of the stock market is to buy low, sell high, right? So yeah, now we're going to look at at this, all right? We're going to flip around, all right? Let me see. Let me try to turn this uh, light off. There we go. I think the flashlight's off. Yeah, flashlight's yeah, flashlight's off. All right, so now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna open up this. We're gonna watch some of these things. Oh, let me uh, unplug this so you can hear it. What's happening this morning with GameStop? This video game store up twenty five hundred percent this year. But then this morning something huge happened, and that's this trading app Robinhood just halted anyone's ability to buy GameStop, to buy AMC movie theaters, to buy Nokia stock. Can you explain why it matters so much? And also, isn't this really just a pushback against the establishment? Yes. Big picture? It absolutely is a pushback against the establishment. It and, and the one thing I'm going to show you guys, too, is, is this right here. Um, Google deletes 100,000 negative reviews of, of the Robinhood app. Right. That's deep, you know, because if uh, normally, you know, Google's not doing that. But, you know, people are mad at Robin Hood for censoring them, which they should be. Right. Because Ro uh, because Robin Hood's afraid like, oh, our users might be mad if they lose their money. But they know there's risk involved. You know, they're treating them like children. Right. They're treating them like a minor. Right. All right. So basically, let me click play. It's almost as if these social media platforms, there's this online populism that is pushing back at the Wall Street insiders and the Wall Street elite, and they're, they're actually piling on into some of these stocks to really hurt the professional short sellers. And the more these stocks go up, the more the big guys are getting creamed and losing billions of dollars. So it's being cheered as sort of this democratization. All, the, all they have to do, all the big guys have to do is just not buy AMC or GameStop, right? They can short something else, right? of Wall Street. Remember, over the past year or two, most of these online brokers, they don't even charge a brokerage fee anymore of $7.99 or $10.99. So it's free for someone to be on one of these uh, Reddit, uh, you know, Wall Street bets forums and get together with a whole bunch of other people and start buying this stock. You know, I talked to somebody today whose son is 25 years old and made $20,000 in three days on GameStop and paid off his student loans, half of his student loans. That's the kind of story that they're spreading and they want a piece of that. Buyer beware. I'm really worried here that as they start to put restrictions in on what you can buy and where you can buy it, that, um, you know, when the music stops, you're not going to have a chair. So please be careful out there, guys. This is a big yeah. game um, that's being played on some of these social media sites. And I love the little guy getting in there. And Anybody notice how people in America always shake their head from left to right? They're like like doing the, you know, the, the, like when they're showing conviction. Like, if you notice, different cultures have different head movements. Like, you know, people in India will be like, you know, moving their head, like kind of bob wobbling it. But people in America are like, yeah, I'm so excited about this. Yeah, this is the coolest thing ever. And they're always doing the no thing. They're always, Americans always, they're always, especially in the news and stuff, they're always shaking their head no. And I'm always like, that's weird. Because if you go to England and somebody's explaining something, they'll be like, blah, 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 like that. But they're never, they're never like this. People in Europe aren't like that. But you notice Americans are always like, they always move, they're shaking their head left and right. All right.
and, and beating the big guns when they can, but just be careful. But yeah, how I mean, is it... The, Go ahead. The get poor stories always outnumber the get rich stories in, in these scenarios. Yeah, well, how these folks feel like this whole thing is rigged against them, and this is their chance with social media, their chance to actually have a voice. But how is it fair for them then? I mean, I, I read Reddit is saying, look, we want to protect our investors. But by the way, if you cut them off from making the moves that they want to make with their own money, for whatever reason they want to make it, and you don't cut off the hedge funds and you don't cut out Wall Street, how is that not rigging the game? She's exactly right. They're rigging the game. You know, they don't do that for them, you know. That's exactly, exactly what people are complaining about um, this morning. You know, why is it distortion when it's small traders banding together and and buying up a stock where they may see legitimate glimmers of hope about a restructuring or something? And it's not gaming the system when a a short seller can, you know, sell shares of a company they don't even own, you know, and and punish those of the the investors, including including retirement funds that may be invested in a company. It's a it's a fascinating story, guys. It really is. All right, let's talk about the GameStop saga already having wider political ramifications too. Senator Elizabeth Warren demanding that U.S. regulators rein in the hedge funds and the private equity firms that she says has treated the market like a casino. Perhaps no surprise there, but Jordan Belfort, who's the wolf of Wall Street trader convicted of stock manipulation during the dot-com boom, told Richard Quest last night when Quest means business that the government will be forced to take action. The SEC and NEC are playing catch up ball. They're always trying to figure out how do you stop it. So eventually they will do something here and they'll come up with some laws or circuit breakers that don't allow this to happen. But that could take three to six months. It will eventually, I believe, stop and it should. And he's saying that because he, you know, got arrested for years. And a lot of people, uh, you know, for, for doing all types of shady stuff in the market. So he's like, hey, you know, they need to stop this, you know. Um, so he's against, you know, the, the common people because he's, you know, he's part of the he was part of the one percent. But a lot of people don't know. The interesting fact is that when he was in jail, you'll never guess who his uh, his jail partner was. His uh, his the person that was in his cell was uh, um, from Cheech and Chong. It was uh, Tommy from Tommy Chong. Radon Chong's father was in the jail cell with the guy from Wolf on Wall Street. It's a very interesting fact. Factoid. Trick today is that the SEC, the regulator, is now hearing from hedge funds pleading for some form of action. Jacob Frankel joins us now. He's a partner at the Washington DC law firm Dickinson Wright, and he's a former SEC senior counsel. Jacob, fantastic to have you on the show. I want to break this down actually into three things if we can. There's the first thing, which is the, the sort of market volatility and the soaring of these specific share prices. Then we've got the action and the behaviours of short sellers in the market and the role they play. And then we've got the Reddit revolt, those on social media that were talking about buying these stocks. Can we start there? From an SEC perspective, do you see any form of manipulation or or malpractice in what was done there for those retail investors? Julie, I I think the best way to sort of put it all together is when you have this kind of market activities, market volatility, the SEC's enforcement division certainly is going to investigate. The existence of an investigation does not mean that there is a violation of the securities laws, but I could easily see the, the enforcement division really looking at three things, fraud, manipulation, and again, we're talking about New York Stock Exchange listed stocks. So there's a specific statute within the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 that actually defines manipulation. And that's certainly something that they will look at. And we'll also look at whether there were enough investors somehow to be perceived as forming a group. And uh, for those that don't know, you know, the, the Security Exchange Act of 1934, what he was just talking about, that came right after, you know, the big drop in in uh, 33. And uh, for uh, for a lot of people that don't know, the Prophet Noble Jew Ali actually he actually uh, in thirty the summer of thirty three he's like this whole thing's about to collapse and and uh, we're going to collapse it. So you know some people say um, you know that that maybe he predicted that, but uh, you know but that's just an interesting another interesting uh, factoid. All right, so yeah, so I'm gonna flip it back around. All right, boom. That may actually give rise to a group disclosure obligation, which, on the other hand, you can argue, well, that's usually for affecting change within a company, in whether it be for corporate governance or other purposes, and that's not really the purpose here. I think fundamentally what the SEC is looking at is 
what and needs to know from a regulatory perspective is what is going on here there's plenty of regulation in place to protect all investors whether it be the funds whether short or long whether in the individual investors but in one of the things that I've been advocating for and I still do I mean look overnight pre-trading the stock hit $450 a share when you look at the fundamentals there's a complete disconnect you know are we moving away from fundamentals being important these are all issues that the SEC does need to grapple with I don't know if it's more regulation um, but I do think there is scrutiny and there needs to be a real focus at the SEC level as to not how, how to stop it necessarily because we all, we've seen momentum trading momentum trading is not going to become illegal it's really more a matter of what is going on here and are there market phenomena? Do the circuit breakers really work or are they sort of old school in the current market? And what's the real motivation behind this trading? A lot of questions, good questions, important questions that I think can be solved in part by the SEC imposing a trading suspension. And to be clear, while the statute says it's for 10 days, the SEC could all, it says up to 10 days. So the SEC easily could step in, impose a one or two day trading suspension to try to create some order and stability in the market. But when you've got a social media group and a bunch of people, and I want to go back to your very important point, I think about when it's a group of individuals talking about doing something, and if they're not actually talking about the fundamentals, they're just talking about perhaps tackling the elites, whether that starts to look like collusion to um, adjust a share price of a stock away from the fundamentals, um, whether that does start to look like something the SEC needs to investigate. Um, but isn't this the point? You, you 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 raise a great you re, you raise a great issue. I think that's one that the SEC is really going to grapple with. All right, so I'm so now we're gonna end that video. We're gonna go to another video in a second. This is the actual GameStop stock. All right, so for those who don't know, um, you can you can hit max. So I clicked max right there. So that's the maximum view, and you can see that the price of the stock over time, right? So you can see like in uh, right here. In April, uh, April nineteenth of two thousand two, it was ten dollars, right? It went all the way up to in two thousand eight. It went up to fifty two dollars in November two thousand seven, right? Then, uh, then it dropped down pretty low to about what eighteen bucks in J June twenty ninth two thousand twelve, and it got all the way down in twenty twenty when the COVID collapse hit because the COVID you know hit the stock market and the crypto market. It went all the way down to five dollars and 43 cents even lower like there's there's you can find it for even lower here some places like see how i can scrub this and get it even lower see like three dollars you know two dollars right like see like so some people got in two dollars so from two dollars i'm gonna click down and i'm gonna go all the way to now that's eleven thousand percent that it's gone up now so that's very abnormal for the normal stock market right things usually aren't going up that much right but uh so that so but if you go to here i'm gonna go to the crypto market so this is the the ttm stocks page you know you got you guys can go to this is ttm stock market analysis scratch notation investing theory right this is uh um you know just a a, a site we made for that, that gives uh stock tips but we switched two years ago we switched just to coins because regular stocks don't really have that much of a return and coins are a much smarter investment right but look at this Look at so we, we so we saw that I'm gonna go back to GameStop and show you how much it went up in a in like a let's see so so GameStop you know within this month just within January it went from 18 bucks to a height of 329 dollars which is a 1,822 dollar increase I mean a percent increase one uh 1,822 percent increase right. So that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money, right? You know, um, but the thing is, uh, for the regular market, that's out, this is outlandish. This never happens to regular stocks, but for the crypto market, this is normal, All right? So look at this. So, um, so it says this is why we only cover the crypto now and and stop covering the regular market. Or right? I call it regs or swag, the swag market. Um, so this this thing called Electro Nero is up four thousand percent in one day. Uh, Pete DeFi is up 2,933% one day. Um, NX Project is up 1,090% in one day. 
Uh, Canada coin is up 1,000% in one day. Decentralized crypto token is up 1,080% in one day. So you can see in the crypto market, in the crypto market, all that stuff is normal. Super volatile, big giant spikes like that, that's normal. You know, I mean, those aren't, you know, heavily traded stocks. You know, those aren't any of the top stops. Those are all the, um, you know, very, very penny stocks, you know. So if you notice that all these things are, are pennies, right? So you see how these things are all under a penny, right? Or, you know, this one is, is the PD5 is, is $3. But most of these other ones are all like a penny. This one, the, the YFA Finance is 30 bucks. You see that went up 900%. But most of these things are very small, right? Because it's easy for something smaller to get bigger, right? Than something that's already big to get bigger, all right? So, um, so yeah, now we're going to um, flip to this next thing, all right? So let me hit on this. This is thing about the Reddit. James is Jamie Rozhazinski. He's the founder of Wall Street Bets, and he founded it nine years ago, but did step away from it last year. He's also the author of Wall Street Bets, How Boomers Made the World's Biggest Casino for millennials. Ha, huh. Jamie, great to have you with us, aptly named in the book. And actually, you did predict, I think, some of what we're seeing here with these Redditors talking about buying these stocks that were heavily shorted. But did you ever imagine this could happen when you founded the platform? Uh, you know, like I said, I, I predicted the trajectory where things were going, but by no means did I predict, uh, predict the, the timing of the magnitude. This thing has happened so quickly, so fast. I think the, the uh, turning point was when I saw yesterday the White House was commenting on this story. I, I can't imagine that I ever envisioned this happening. You've been quoted as calling this a train wreck happening in real time. What do you mean by a train wreck? Uh, you know... And for those that know uh, for, uh, DJ terminology, a, cha a train wreck is also a you know DJ term for you know for mixing two things together and not not actually mixing them in it, and it's called a train wreck when you can't mix. Oh, there's a lot of forces at play that have just never been tested. You know, there's, a, there's a lot of people looking and commenting on this story, looking for precedent before, and there just isn't. There's it's it's too different. The dynamics. There's too many people. The technology. The the uh, social component of it and, and the regulation, which quite frankly, I think was written at the time that wasn't able to predict this type of thing either. So we're, what we're going to see or what we're seeing is kind of this collision between uh, a system which is clearly not behaving the way it should be behaving, yet nobody's prepared to handle it on the regulatory side, the government side, or, or on the actual uh, forum itself. We just had... Um... A uh, senior council member formerly at the SEC saying that there's enough regulations in place for everyone here to protect them. But I, I kind of agree with you. I do see a, a pretty seismic shift here. And it's a combination of social media platforms like Reddit that allow people to talk about what they're going to do and to debate these things and to collectively make a decision to do something combined with what we're calling the democratization of access to financial stocks through platforms that for the most part are free. All right, now, now we're going to look at what actually happened when Robinhood banned everybody. Because I had friends in my time that are like, yo, Robinhood just banned me. I can't buy anything. So, yeah, shout out to everybody that's in the room now. And, you know, and, and shout out to everybody that's, that's investing in GameStop. Uh, so, so I'm going to go to the past five days, right? So we can see the past five days. So you can see, you know, it was at 60, it was at uh, 70, 80 bucks, right? January 25th, right? And I think I believe this is the day uh, that they that they stopped it. Um, I believe yeah, it was at 320. I'm not sure what time of day, but then oh maybe it was the, the 28th maybe is is when it happened, right? So it kept on going up, and then this big drop is when they stopped people right here. It was going up and going up, and this is when they stopped all the Robinhood users from buying anymore right here. At uh, uh at, at this point, and then it dropped because they couldn't even buy any, and people started selling. And this is what they were trying to do. They, they, they feel that the, the stock is too high, so they want, they want the stock to come back down like a, like a normal stock, right? Not like a crypto stock that just keeps going up. They want a regular stock to act like a regular stock and not act like a crypto. But as I was saying before, uh, my analysis, my theory is, is showing that, you know, the regular stock market and the crypto market have merged. So, you know, so they can't stop this, you know, uh, regular stocks from being being like crypto unless they actually block people like here right so they blocked everybody but look it's still coming back up even blocking everybody people are still buying it using other accounts and look and now we, we're at today right so let's we're at today and we're almost back to that other height 
right? It's only gone down uh, 6% since it's, uh, since it's maximum, right? You see that's only gone down 6%. And you can use these, uh, this, this thing on Google, they have a really cool, you know, you can use other websites too, but Google has its own stock analysis thing and you can use this tool, right? And for those that, that know, what scratch is this? What scratch is this? That's an upside down uh, um, uh, slice, right? That's an upside down slice scratch. Right, so that so scratching and the stock market have a lot to do to get a lot to do with each other, all right, and uh, that's why I created TTM stock market analysis, all right. So now I'm going to flip over to Ethereum just to show you how in the regular in in the crypto market it's the same thing, right? So we got Ethereum, right, and I was telling I gave you all that example about it going up a thousand percent. So this is the COVID collapse again. This is two thousand. Let me go over here. The COVID collapse right over here. As you can see at the bottom, it was at 132 bucks. It can go even lower. Let's see if I can get it lower. There you go. 122 bucks. It was 122 bucks on. Let's see. What was that? Let me get back to that 122. Let me see. There you go. 122 on March 13th. March 13th. Right now on on it went up a thousand percent from March 13th to January 29th. Right, that's where it is now. Right now it's at, I'm gonna click on one day. Right now it's at like 1300, you know, on average about 1400 almost, right? So it's gone up a thousand percent in one year. That doesn't happen with regular stocks in the stock market. And before I was telling, teaching y'all about market cap, um, oops, oh, this whole thing just crashed. But uh, that's fine, I can, end the, I can end the lecture though. It's a perfect time to uh, end the lecture, my computer crashed. But yeah, so that, that, that's basically it. That's um, I'm, I'm showing that this, the mystery of what's happening with this whole GameStop thing is, is really a very simple thing. And the simple fact is that the regular stock market and the crypto market are, have already collided. They, they collided in, in uh, 2000, uh, really 2018 is when they collided. When regular, because it used to be regular stocks, you would never see a day where it's like, oh, everything dropped 10%. You know, if something dropped ten percent. That'd be like you know, people are jumping out of windows when it's you know dropping thirty percent, fifty percent, twenty percent. But in crypto, that happens all the time. It's like, oh look, it's down twenty percent today. Oh look, it's up thirty percent today. Oh, you know, the it's a lot more volatile. But when things are more volatile, you can make more money. So the basic premise of premise of making money in the stock market or the crypto market. I don't recommend the stock market. I, I pretty much only recommend the crypto. Uh, but the, the main thing is is uh, is buying low and selling high, right? So um, so right now, you know, when I look at Red, uh, not Reddit, but when I look at GameStop, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, that's not a great buy because it's just so high. It's probably it might drop, you know. But the people that are buying it, as long as people keep buying it and keep putting on money, it'll go up forever, you know. And people, you know, as long as uh, but there's you know obviously there's a limit to people's wages and how much money people can put on it. But people get paid. People are getting paid every Friday or. Every other Friday, they can keep putting money on it and it can keep, keep, keep going up. But obviously, it will probably drop at a certain point. But who knows? Maybe uh, a lot of people keep holding. The more people that hold, the more it's not going to drop. You know, So as long as people aren't getting psyched out and scaring, it can keep going up. And it could eventually stay at 300 bucks. You know, just like how Bitcoin. Bitcoin used to be, you know, 80 bucks, 200 bucks. You know, now Bitcoin is 3,400 bucks. So to everybody that's watching this right now, I, I, I recommend, you know, uh, Please, you know, definitely uh, make sure you, you start working on passive income and putting your money into the stock market, uh, into the crypto market. You know, I wouldn't even say the stock market, but if you want to buy GameStop or AMC or whatever, you know, do your thing. But, you know, I, I would recommend uh, this, the stock market. I have a, a, um, a student named uh, Kitchy. She's actually a musician. And, uh, you know, so I, you know, I, I give her classes on music stuff, but also give her, give her stock classes. And she put in about, I think, about 5,000 bucks on Ethereum and Litecoin and all this stuff at the bottom of that drop. When I was telling her last summer, I was like, you got to like, you gotta buy, you got to buy crypto at the bottom of that drop. And her 5,000 bucks, you know, turned into about 15,000 bucks, you know, so she made a good, but she, she sold a lot of stuff early. Like she sold her Litecoin early and probably her Ethereum early, a lot of it, um, but, and Bitcoin too. She bought some, about a lot of Bitcoin um, but yeah, she was able to triple her money. She was able to take five thousand and turn that into into uh, fifty fifteen thousand. Um, this is the last thing I'm going to talk about whales. And for those of you that don't know, anytime you hear the word whales, what they're talking about when they say whales, 
whales are people that uh, um, that are, are basically the 1%, like billionaires, that when they jump into the pool, it's like a whale jumping into the swimming pool, it's going to make a big splash. So if they buy a billion, if they buy 10 million shares of a stock, that stock's going to go up a lot, or a coin is going to go up a lot. If they sell, you know, 10 million, it's going to go down a lot. So it's basic. so a regular person is more like a, basically like a guppy or a, you know, a little microscopic fish in the water and they're putting their hundred bucks on it and it makes the stock go up a little bit. You know, it's like having a bathtub and you drop a, um, you know, you drop a little microscopic amoeba in the bathtub. Yeah, the, the, the volume of the bathtub is going to go up. The market cap is going to go up, but uh, not by much. But if you drop a, you know, a giant, you know, cinder block in that bathtub, it's going to splash and it might overflow. So when a, when a whale jumps into the market, you know, they, they can control a lot of things. They can make something fall or go up. So if a whale goes into something, it's going to go up. So all, with the GameStop people, they're basically collectively coming together. It's basically like a bunch of guppies coming together and becoming one giant whale and jumping into the market and creating big splashes. And the other whales are mad at it. So it's all the Reddit people have kind of formed, come together to form one whale. And they're like, hey, we're going to splash AMC. Oh, we're going to splash this. We're going to splash this, right? When you talk, people talk about drip, we can even connect drip with that. You know, that's literally, you know, uh, stock market drip. And uh, the homie Victor, uh, Victor Benet, he had a question about, um, I wasn't able to answer questions that I saw on the stream, um, but uh, I just saw his thing now. I was looking at the video, um, the first part of the video, and he asked me what's a good site to get into um, to trade coins, and I would recommend Coinbase. The reason I would recommend Coinbase is because they're the the biggest. They've got the biggest market cap. They've got billions and billions. Like you know, let me see what the actual number is. Um, I, I, don't know, I think my no, it's still still crashed. Um, they've got billions and billions. And so so to Victor, I would go with uh, I would go with Coinbase. And the cool thing about Coinbase is, like I was saying in the lecture, they've only got two coins maybe that aren't in, really, no. They, they, none of their coins are not in the plus. All of their coins are at least, you know, 10 to 500% in the plus for the year. And that's pretty good. Any regular stock trading thing is like, you know, you're going to have stuff all over the place. And most things aren't going to be anywhere near, you know, t even a 10% uh, gain. But Every single thing on on Coinbase is, is way up, so I would go I would go with Coinbase because they're very discreet about how they choose their coins. You know, a lot of uh, um, cause, and another reason too is that, um, you know, basically the thing with the lowest market cap on Coinbase is like maybe Orchid, which is a very good buy right now. If anybody that's trying to get Orchid, um, and they've got one of the lowest market caps on there, like a hundred million, I think. And then, you know, you go all the way up to Bitcoin, Bitcoin that's got, you know, billions and billions and billions on it. So, you know, I would go with uh, Coinbase. And also Coinbase gives you free money. If you sign up to Coinbase, what they do is they'll give you these little tutorials where it'll be like a two minute, three minute tutorial that you watch um, on a coin. coin. All these coin companies are giving away free money. So right now, anybody that's watching this can get, you know, up to maybe 157 free bucks through Coinbase. But what they do is they, you watch a two to three minute video and then you answer one multiple choice question on it. They'll just ask you what the main idea of the video is or the main idea of the coin. And you just answer that one question. But then if you keep doing that, they give you about 50 different tests. You can make like 150 bucks and then you can sell Then you can send that those that money to your bank or you can just convert it to other coins. Right. And we'll, we'll talk more about how to make money off of coins, um, you know, because what you can also do is. Um, when you, instead of just selling a coin and turning it to cash, like you have to do with stocks, the thing that's key about coins is that you can convert it to another coin without losing any money. So that's, that's the main reason, uh, why coins are way better because with regular stocks, let's say you make some money off of stock, you have to sell it and turn it to USD and then you have to buy another stock with it. But with coins, you can just say, Hey, that coin profited. Now I'm going to convert this coin to this other coin. Um, that's at a lower value and wait for that thing to go up and then that thing goes up You can just keep doing the same thing over and over again. So that's that's why um, With coins you can make a way more money because you don't have to keep converting it um, Back to dollars again. You can just you know be at a profit and then convert it um, Convert it to another coin over and over again. All right. So yeah, that, that's basically all, all I wanted to say I just wanted to put those in I wanted to answer Victor's question and I wanted to tell you all the definition of whales, right? 
And, you know, so with Coinbase, you can convert coins. The best coin to convert um, is DAI. DAI, you can convert, let's say you sell your Ethereum, you can convert it to DAI, and then you hold it in DAI. And DAI basically is a coin that um, it kind of revolves around the US dollar. So like at the most, it's gonna be like a dollar two cents, at the least maybe 97 cents or something. And it, it'll never go below like 98 cents, 95 cents maybe, or go above a dollar and five cents. So you know that, uh, so they program that coin to, to have a very, very limited uh, volatility or going this way, it, it's only gonna stay within uh, um, that range, like a negative five or, or plus 5% uh, range. So yeah, this is why I, I recommend, you know, only crypto to people, uh, you know, being in the crypt, being involved in the crypto market. All right. All right. So peace, everybody. All right. Peace.